Well, we've talked about the traditional way of making a glide path, and that was using 10 and 15 hand files. Recently, there's been the development of path files, and path files give us a mechanical way to rapidly shape longer canals, smaller diameter canals, and more curved canals. So in longer, smaller diameter, and more curved canals, significant chair time can be saved in a very safe way using three path files. The three path files have tip diameters of 13, 16, and 19, and they're all fixed tapered, and it's a square cross section. These are rotated a little slower than we would use shaping files. You can rotate it 250 or 300, but the torque shouldn't be 520. The torque should be more like perhaps 300 gram centimeters. These are delicate instruments, so they don't need a big torque. The disclaimer is we do not use three path files until we have catheterized any portion of the canal with a tin file. The tin file needs to precede the mechanical files. The tin file must be worked in any region of the canal until it is loose. And when you have a loose tin, you can immediately go to a 13, 16, and 1902 path files. Let's take a look. I want to um, give credit to my friends Arnaldo Castellucci, Giuseppe Cantatori, and Elio Baruti. We call them affectionately the Italian Mafia. I've known these guys for almost 30 years. This is amazing, and I'll say it again, this is an amazing contribution to glide path management, and it's the first revolutionary breakthrough in the history of endodontics. So let's look at how we would use three path files to mechanically secure the glide path. I'm playing this video clip at two times the speed. You can see that in the bottom image, we're spinning the larger diameter yellow band handle. That's the 1902. And then you can see we're using the white one in the upper right one, and then finally the purple one. The biggest cross-sectional instruments break first. Notice these instruments didn't have any torque on them. That's important, but they did have an enormous cyclic fatigue. All these instruments were moving over 90 degrees of curvature into a loose tube. That's why there was no torque, as they were spinning inside a metal loose tube. But you can see that the instruments were passing through significant cyclic fatigue demands and notice that we got almost 30 seconds, almost 35 seconds, and finally 44 seconds on the smallest one. We would never be in a canal even a fraction that long, so this should give you some confidence that these instruments are quite durable and quite resistant to fracture. Arnaldo Castellucci shared this molar with me and notice he has opened the tooth and he has catheterized the canal with a tin file. And knowing Arnaldo, like I know him, he has that tin file loose. And once that tin file is loose, you can begin to imagine, we could begin to entertain conversations about could we spin three path files through that significant multi-planar curvature. This file is making a 90 degree turn roughly at the more coronal curvature and apically it's about another 90 degree curvature relative to this first curvature. So the second curvature relative to the first curvature is another 90. This would take a long time to work a 15 file down to that length. So watch carefully and you'll notice the first 1302 emerging at the foramen. Notice the white instrument is not engaging dentin towards its terminal extent. It's cutting more away from length. Finally, when we get to the 1902, it's cutting at length, and notice how long it's cutting intentionally through the foramen with no transportation. Notice the apical foramen is perfectly round with no ripping or tearing. This is pretty exciting stuff. So they shared some cases with me. Arnaldo showed me this maxillary molar. Notice the dramatic curvatures. These were all catheterized with a tin hand file. Then there was three path files to expand the glide path, and the canals were then shaped with pro taper prior to obturation. Look at Giuseppe's beautiful second molar. Look at the roller coaster roots on the buccal systems. 
Again, first a tin file to catheterize the canal, then three path files to expand the, to expand the glide path, and finally the pro tapers were used to bring in the final shapes and to finish the preparations. Filippo has hands of magic. He is the Leonardo da Vinci of Italy perhaps, but you can see in this terminal abutment, notice the curvature, notice the curvature in the mesial root. It's pretty significant because it's up in the middle one-third, but notice the apical one-third of the distal root. That's more than 90 degrees. Notice Again, the loose tin was required to get to the three path files, then three path files to get to pro taper, and you're looking at pro taper shapes. Notice the shapes are conducive to disinfection. And notice that disinfected canals that are clean three dimensionally are conducive to filling root canal systems. Notice the systems that were filled in this exquisitely treated tube. The secret is access and glide path. In conclusion, to emphasize glide path management, more and more colleagues have to make decisions between is it a manual versus a mechanical method, is it stainless steel or is it nickel titanium, and what is the appropriate size that the glide path should be expanded to to prepare for shaping procedures. We will talk about these and new innovations in this area in the days ahead.